Welcome back to DIY with Dave. In this video, I'm going to build this Lego table from rough cut lumber. When I was a kid, I loved to play with Legos, and my kids love to play with Legos now too, and so I wanted to build them a table that they could play with. I, I searched around for a lot of different designs, and my wife and I talked about it, and we decided that what we really wanted was a table that wouldn't just constantly be a Lego table, but a table that could double as a nice coffee table, as well as a toy or play or fun table for the kids. And so I drew up plans for this design and went out to build it. Now I'm building this table from rough cut maple, and so the first step in building it is to mill out all of my lumber. I use a miter saw and a table saw to cut the pieces to a rough size, and then a jointer to get a flat face and a square edge, and then lastly a thickness planer to get all the pieces to a uniform thickness. Now that I've got all my pieces cut, I've got to start uh, joining them together. So for most of the joinery, I'm going to be using this uh, doweling jig, uh, and this will help keep everything together. Dowels are fairly strong joints. I mean, not super strong, not as strong as a mortise and tenon, but they'll do in a pinch. And um, But I think it'll be good uh, to give it some structure and some strength. I'm also going to be joining two pieces together for the corners. So um, I measured these, so this and, and this piece will go together and kind of form a square like that, and that will be uh, the corner. And so the other pieces are gonna be coming off here or here. Uh, so this thickness is the same as this thickness here. Uh, it'll even look more like a, a one solid piece of wood altogether. You won't actually know that it's like an L shape. So that's the plan for the corners. And so I've got a lot of uh, holes to drill, so I'm gonna start doing that. I'm gonna uh, join the the corner pieces together and then we'll go from there. An important thing to note is that all of my pieces are two inches wide. This is deliberate because that's the width of my doweling jig and it's much easier to line up the workpiece to the entire jig than it is to draw lines and try to make sure that everything is aligned. So I've got a bit of a problem. Um, when I drilled, I, I drilled the dowel holes before I glued the corner pieces together, which is great. And I thought it would be a good idea to do that because I thought it'd be easier. The challenge is that I drilled them in the wrong spot. So I drilled them here and they're supposed to be drilled here. And if you look at it, it doesn't line up with the other side. So that is a problem. So I need to drill these holes again. I've drilled a couple of them here. So I drilled a hole here. Uh, that's actually just the, the sawdust from the drill. So these, are, these two are in the right spot. This one's gonna be covered up. I'm not worried about that. That's gonna be covered up by the, um, the piece of wood that's gonna sit right here. This one's not though. So I'm gonna need to fix that. They do say that um, a lot of woodworking is learning how to fix your mistakes. So they're not noticeable. I am planning on painting this, and so it's really not gonna be a problem. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a 3 8 inch dowel, uh, put it in there to plug it up, cut it, and then sand it, and uh, you'll never know. So, let's fix it.
My next step is to use a router table and make a groove that's big enough for the panel to sit in. Next, I cut all the panels and then it's time to glue up the base. When it comes time to glue up the larger sides, I had a problem because I didn't have clamps that were big enough. So I rigged up a system with these ratchet straps so that I could get the clamping pressure that I needed while the glue dried. I'll do another video in the future to show you how I did that and, and what I learned from it. Now with the base all glued up, I'll attach some brace pieces to the bottom and then install a plywood sheet that'll act as the bottom of the box for all the Legos to sit in. From there, I'll need to make sure that I caulk all the cracks so that there's no nooks and crannies for the Legos to hide. The next step is perhaps one of the most important, and that is adding pieces of wood to the top of the box for the tabletop. These pieces are the perfect, perfect width for one part of the top to be fastened and the other part to sit or rest on top. The importance of this step will become more clear later on in the project, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So now would be a great time to take a little break and tell you about my website, DIYWithDave.com. Now at my website, DIYWithDave.com, I have been adding a lot of my projects with some extra pictures and some things that I don't have time to put into the video. In fact, I have this project up on my website with some detailed plans on how I built it and all the measurements that I used and even some things that I learned from doing this project that would help you if you wanted to build something similar. So make sure you check out my website, DIYWithDave.com. Also, if you're new to my channel, I hope that you'll check out some of my other videos. I do a lot of woodworking videos, a lot of DIY home improvement videos with tips and tricks and fun stuff. So be sure to check those out. Be sure to also subscribe to my channel if this is something that you like to see and if you want to see more from some of the projects that I'm doing and the projects that I've planned. Um, also be sure to like this video, uh, leave me a comment if you have a question or a thought on what I did, and be sure to hit that bell icon when you subscribe so that you can be notified as I post new videos.
we're getting close. Uh, my wife painted a coat of primer on it last night, and as she was doing it, she said that she thought that the table was too tall. And I patterned this out of a coffee table that I built. Um, that coffee table was 18 inches, which is about standard height for a coffee table. Usually wanted about maybe the same level, maybe a few inches taller than a, um, the couch or a couch. And um, this one here, I, I made a few inches taller. I made it at 22 inches, um, which you know, with the top would be another three fourths of an inch. So uh, almost 24 inches, which um, I thought was gonna be okay. But you know, when she said it, I, I, I realized that she's right. It was really too tall um, for the kids to, to be able to reach everything they wanna reach um, uh, inside of it as they're playing with the Legos and, and other things. So I'm gonna cut the legs. Um, I really hate doing stuff like this uh, mid project. You know, usually I like to get it all prepared and ready to go, but sometimes you have to make adjustments, and so I'm gonna have to do that. So I'm gonna be cutting off uh, four inches off of each of the legs, and what's really important here is to make sure that you do it right. Make sure that you cut them all to the same uh, height or else it's gonna be wobbly. So we'll have to, to work through that. Um, I'm gonna use my track saw. The reason I'm gonna do that is that my track saw, it's a circular saw, but it has a plunge feature, and I think that'll help me uh, keep more control and make the cut a lot smoother. Uh, so, so we'll go with that and we'll, fingers crossed, that this goes well. Here we go. The top is going to be built in two parts. The first is a border which consists of four pieces of maple. I mill each board the same as all of my other lumber and then attach them to each other using dowels. After a good sanding, I use a palm router to uh, round over the edges. And then I attach the pieces to the table with screws. And I'm screwing these uh, screws into the ledge that I added on before. Now the important thing here is to make sure that there's enough space all around the board of the table so that the other pieces will insert and be able to rest on them. I've left about a half inch around each side and that's plenty for those pieces to sit. The other part of the table consists of two pieces that I am putting in the center. And this is where there will be the Lego top and then also on the other side I'm putting a chalkboard. For the other side, I made a quarter inch maple veneer that I just glued down. To make the veneer, I had to resaw a bunch of maple boards. Resawing means taking boards that have already been sawn and cutting them even thinner. The best tool for resawing wood is bandsaw, but because I don't have a bandsaw, I'm using a table saw. Table saws aren't ideal for this because the blade of a table saw is generally thicker than the blade of a bandsaw. Uh, it's also a bit more dangerous, so you need to be careful. After I resaw the pieces of wood, I use the thickness planer again to get them down to the perfect thickness. Thank you. 
Then I glue the maple veneer down to the plywood pieces that I cut out earlier. With the two boards in, or the two square pieces down, it's really hard actually to lift them up. And so I needed to cut some holes so you can actually get your fingers in there and pull them out. So that's one of the last steps I do, is I cut these holes uh, with this Forstner bit so that uh, you can actually pull your fingers in and pull the pieces of, of uh, wood out from the center. After that, I just seal it up with a couple of coats of uh, polyurethane finish, and then we're done. So this is a really fun build and the kids really love the table. And I love building things for them that they enjoy and something like this that'll last a really long time. Hopefully they'll be able to share it with their kids or we'll have it for the grandkids or whatever. And so it's really exciting and fun to build stuff like this out of real wood in a way that's gonna last a long time. So I hope you like this video, and if you do, make sure that you give me a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos like this, and check out the other videos that I've posted. Like I say, I do a lot of videos about woodworking, uh, DIY projects, and I have a lot of really great videos coming. Uh, in fact, we've been working on that playroom and really modeling the whole thing, and I've documented all of it, and I'll be sharing that with you. So be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can see all the stuff that we're doing in there. And um, also check out my um, Instagram at DIYWDave. And uh, we post there all the time, so make sure you, you uh, look us up there and, and see what there is to see. So thanks again. I hope to see you in another video sometime here in the future, and have a great day.